it is circling the drain. It is not looking good. And as we get closer and closer to what would be the start of the college football season, it really is starting to feel like it's just a matter of time before the Power Five conferences pull the plug on a fall season. Maybe they play in the spring, but it feels like they're getting closer and closer to conceding it's impossible to make this work at the college level. It certainly does, I got Mike. You in the middle of a drink. Well, it's okay. I laid Don't out. Worry. I laid out. You laid out just, just in as time. You're ready to take a drink. <laughs> oh, it was a good drink, though. I need it. Uh, either way, I mean, th- this is something you and I have been talking about for the past, you know, few weeks, uh, I, and and even before this. I don't think even before we started our break, you know, before training camp, mid June, you and I were sitting here going, "Man, I don't know how college football is going to pull this off. I don't really get it." And you know, as we know, it's young kids. There's more guys on a football team. Certainly, there's the school aspect, and how is that going to be handled? So, as it looks right now, and you know, again, this is kind of hashtag as expected. Yeah, I didn't think college football was going to be able to figure all of this out and get on the same page and come up with a plan. A plan. I mean, we were complaining about the NFL and lack of plan and transparency as far as that discussion and what that plan is. And we've heard almost nothing from college football, let alone, Mike. I mean, I always like lean on something you say. Never heard it. I haven't heard. I thought it was academics first. I haven't heard about college yet. School. Isn't that why they're there? Isn't that what they're always arguing? So, you know, when I look at those two things, yes, I think it's uh, highly unlikely that we have a college football season, at least during this regular fall time maybe late in fall early winter it starts up but I I don't see it happening when the pandemic really got going and the colleges shut down and shifted over to online learning and the questions first emerged Chris about college football one of the things I said is you can't have college football without college how can you tell 98 no or in some cases 99.9 percent of the student body you stay home but the football players come. It's not safe for 99.99% of the students, but we need the football players here because we got to play the games and we got to make the money. And, 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 and all along, the threat to the system has been if you try too hard to pull this off, you're going to expose once and for all what everybody already knows. Right. It's a cash-generating machine. That's what it is. The Mid-American Conference pulled the plug on Saturday and, you know, reportedly the presidents of the various universities, the Ball States, Kent States, Eastern Michigan, Western Michigan, Central Michigans of the world, they came to the conclusion the finances don't make sense, which shows you at the core they're no different than the other conferences. The other conferences, the finances do make sense. They do make sense. That's why we continue to push this. It's not about what's right or what's wrong or what's safe or what's not. It's about... It's a lot of money out there to well, be lost. And the TV money, right? With the, I would think with the big conferences compared to the MAC, where, yes, it has a TV con- uh, contract, but not on the same capacity the SEC or the Big Ten have. So I, 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 I'm just flushing this out, Mike. So I'm guessing that would be the right. reason it's still economically, you know, in their, their, their eyes of why they want to do this. Yeah, and for the MAC, for them the big ticket is – being cannon fodder, essentially preseason games for the major conference yeah. teams, even though from time to time the MAC team will rise up and bite one of those major conference teams in the butt, they lose those paydays. The TV doesn't matter for the MAC like it does for the SEC, right. the ACC, the Big Ten, Big 12, and Pac-12. And that's why we see and have continued to see this effort to, to continue to reach for that brass ring that is just out of reach because I just feel like, You know, the NFL has one mission. The NFL's mission is to stage football games in the fall in pursuit of an eventual championship and then lather, rinse, repeat, do it again, again, again. That's what they do. Colleges are there doing a bunch of different things. You got a bunch of different hats that you're trying to wear. And, And I just feel like when it comes to football, there's never been any real leadership that would bring these conferences together these schools together, and the NCAA has essentially vacated any and all responsibility for this, although they did step up last week with some things that are good for the players. You haven't seen that push to get it done. You know, some of these schools, Chris, they don't even test the players unless they are symptomatic or have been proven to be in close contact with someone who has COVID-19. There isn't a regular testing program 
like what we see with the NFL teams every day, every day, at least for the first couple right. of weeks. And then if everything's good, it shifts to every other day. So I, I, I just I feel like the absence of anyone early on saying if we want to have any chance at doing this, this is what we need to do nationally or at least among the five big conferences. This is how we're going to pull it off. I just feel like, you know, the coaches kept going forward, full speed ahead, damn the torpedoes. It's just the flu, kind of that ad- attitude. You know, and, and I'm not going to name names, but, you know, I think the coaches have believed all along we'll, we'll just be able to kind of will our way through this. And then between the athletic directors and the presidents, I just feel like no one at the school level no. stood up and said, holy crap, we got to do something that makes more sense. And no one at a more broad level all the way up to the NCAA said, hey, if we want to pull this off, these are the things we got to do. And it's too late to do it now. Yeah, it is. It is. It's way too late to do it now. I mean, how can you feel comfortable if you're a parent in, in certain scenarios and, you know, you do have a son who's playing college football that has asthma or, you know, has a, a high body mass index, what we've talked about, those type of things, and you don't hear something concrete or something detailed to make you feel good about sending your kid there? I understand that. And then, you know, the NCAA late leadership, you know, I mean, I've, I've had issues with that for years. I mean, you've heard me complain from time to time about that. And, you know, yes, it does seem like at this point with those five power conferences, um, you know, they're trying to figure out their own way first before even talking to the other people and trying to figure out a plan to, oh, can we get a final four? Can we have a champion? Whatever that may be. You know, the SEC only seems worried about the SEC right now. The Big Ten's worried about the Big Ten. Yeah, where is the NCAA in all of this to where they kind of pull it all together and they're like, okay, here's the plan, guys. All right, you're the big money makers in college football. You're the ones that everybody tunes tunes in to watch on a weekly basis, right? Let, let's figure this out to formulate some sort of plan and get a season going and whatever that may be. And uh, it doesn't even seem like that's close to happening. And... You know, you can will all you want, you know, and I understand there's players out there that are going, we want to play, we want to play. And I, I understand that, but that doesn't mean that's the best thing for society right now either. And unfortunately, what I'm starting to like realize with some of these incidents too, is like, you know, it seems like something's bad is going to have to happen before some people start to realize like, oh, wait, this is, this is dangerous or, whoa, I can't believe it actually hit home here. And one of our coaches is you know, now on his deathbed. And, you know, we all just said we were going to play and push forward. And gosh, now we're going to have to see our coach and his family and all those other people who are sad. And, you know, they're, they're mourning a, a man that's very sick. And it just feels like that's the way it's going to have to hit home in some of these scenarios. And uh, I don't think that's the way it should be either. But, you know, here's the thing with 160,000 dead since March, you'd think that most people would know somebody by now to the point where it will hit home, whether it's a loved one, a friend, an acquaintance, or somebody it where they died me. from this, and it and it wakes you up, right, right, right. It wakes you up, and you say, "Holy crap, we do need to take this seriously." But Chris, you mentioned the push by the players, and it, it is coordinated. It, it it's as coordinated as that coordinated as that effort by NFL players a few weeks ago to put pressure on the league to get everything worked out so they could get to camp. Justin Fields, the Ohio State quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, the Clemson quarterback, other top prospects, tweeting out last night a graphic, a a pre-made by someone graphic that has the logos of the five top conferences with the messages, we are united, we want to play. Here's what it says. We all want to play football this season. And then under that, see, the, the headline is, hey, they want to play. Hey, let them play if they want to play. Why are we giving them a hard time about playing? They make demands, Chris. Establish universal mandated health and safety procedures and protocols to protect college athletes against COVID-19 among all conferences throughout the NCAA. Give players the opportunity to opt out and respect their decision. Guarantee eligibility whether a player chooses to play the season or not. Use our voices to establish open communication and trust between players and officials. Ultimately create a college football players association with a representative of the players of all Power 5 conferences. So, you know, you're going to have some that see this as... They're fine. They want to play. I think if you look at it more deeply, they're making specific demands yeah. in order to play. And I don't know that the schools are going to be all that thrilled about giving in to these demands because the first one 
having some sort of universal mandated health and safety procedure, they don't. There's none. How are they going to pull it all together? No. How, the, how are they going to have a universal health and safety protocol that applies to every school that they just kind of pull out of thin air today and get everything on track for September? It's not going to happen. No, and there's no way it's going to happen. Maybe it can happen with each individual conference. Maybe the SEC can come up with some certain game plan to where, okay, these are the guidelines and you know the bylaws of which each team has to follow here and there. You know, but yeah, it just seems like it's way too late in the game for that. Certainly, you know, and then yes, without the daily testing and things like that. And then I don't know what are the protocols? What are they doing right now? You know, when these kids are leaving football and doing that, you know, I mean, you're hearing certain colleges canceling certain things and workouts. I mean, I just can't imagine how anything can go smoothly or work out with the current state. I mean, it's just way too late. They're, they're too late into the game. So, I mean, for, for the very least, there's just there's no way it's happening in September. It's just the way I look at it. It's just like, are they going to have football maybe by November? Or are they just going to chalk it up to 2021 and start, you know, early spring, winter time, whatever that may be? I just I, I can't imagine we're going to see it this year. And, you know, that, that raises the question then, do you have two full college football seasons in one calendar year? And are there health and safety issues there if you play from – January or February until May, yeah, right, and then turn around and fire up the engine again in September and jam in two seasons in one year. I it, there's a lot of questions, just like it was with the NFL. Every time you answer a question or try to, five more questions pop up in its wake. Here's a question for you because this is a this is a, a theory that has been floated by those in the media who are very insistent on college football going forward, those who have a vested financial interest, unlike the players who don't get paid, in seeing these games happen, are are making this argument, Chris. And we need to flesh this out and see yeah. if it holds any water. Right. If they don't play college football, right, college football gives these guys structure. It gives them a reason to try to stay clean from the virus. It gives them a place where they can be tested and they can be monitored and they can be protected and if we don't have college football, they're just going to go out and do a bunch of stupid, you know, 18, 19, 20-year-old things, and they'll be more at risk if we don't have college football. How do you feel about that argument? Well, I, I, don't, I don't buy that, you know. I mean, so, so, you know, I understand there's a little bit more of a, yeah, I'm with my team and I got somebody yelling at or, you know, keeping me in check a little bit about what we should do, but they're still 18 or 19 years old, and they're going to be careless at some point and do something like that. So, you know, I, I, I don't know if I can, like, sit there and buy into that argument all the way there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, maybe a full sequester school by school is the only well, way yeah, to that would that be that off, it, right. because you're right. But, but are they going to want to do that? Or, and, and will they respect that? I mean, what are you going to have to do? Lock them down in a hotel and monitor every exit so there's no way they can get out and no way anyone can get in? It, it's just – see, the thing it seems is, the more they do to try yes, to – right. And and it and it and it makes it even more hypocritical that these guys who are cogs in a billion dollar machine aren't actually getting compensated for their time. They're just getting the education that in a lot of cases the coaches don't want them to take full advantage of because it gets in the way of the reason why they're there, which is to basically major in football. Now, you know, and, and I I I I hear that argument about, well, you know, if they're not playing football, they're going to go out and they're going to engage in unsafe activities and they may get COVID-19 anyway. The, the question is, do these schools want to institutionalize what becomes a potential super spreader event? Yeah, that's if exactly If you aren't it. testing the way the NFL is, if you're putting these guys out there on the practice field. We saw the Big Ten pull the plug on padded practices until they can figure out what the hell they're going to do because they understand if you have guys out there that haven't been tested every single day and one guy is positive, you can spread it around all of them. And and I think there's a sensitivity to the community that it's one thing for individuals to make bad choices on their own time. It's another thing for the schools to provide the platform yeah, to do that. for spreading the virus among the players, among the coaches, to their families, to the community. And even though there's no way to draw it all back, to where it started from, I think that these university presidents are smart enough to know that they're setting up a bunch of Petri dishes that can ultimately increase dramatically the infection rates in the community. Yeah. So that's the difference. You don't want to be responsible for organizing what becomes a COVID-19 party where the virus gets spread 
uh, by you, by your organization, setting up these football practices and games without the proper protocols. Well, in place. yeah, I think that's the big thing. I think you're right. And when I, you know, I think about my college days. Okay, and 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 I know things are different right now, but they're not like so different. I mean, we're seeing there's a lot of cities and places open, and some that are still trying to you know be in denial of, of the situation we're in altogether. But I mean, I think the big thing is what you said: the super spreader. Uh, possibility that would be what would I would scare me if I'm running an or you know running a school or in charge of these kids or whatever it may be where okay yes we've had practice we're not testing on a daily basis man hey hey you know Trevor Lawrence here he is he's got a few guys hey let's go to you know let's get a burger down the street whatever it may be all right let's do that burger fries come on we're a little hungry I'm sick of eating the cafeteria stuff it's real bland because school's not in we're the only people in school there so I'm sick of that meal whatever okay so now you go there six seven ten guys whatever you're only testing once every few days as you mentioned somebody might have the virus among that group for those few days, now a bunch of guys on the team might have it. Maybe a few of them are at that restaurant. Where does it go from there? And that's where, you know, I, I do think, you know, we owe it to society to not take those chances and be that super spreader because we've heard enough horror stories as is already where there's been those type of events and it catches like wildfire. And then people end up dying or being in the hospital really sick for a long, long time. And I certainly wouldn't want that on my conscience. I know that.